Hello, you lovely people at iPhotography. This is Emily Lowry, your tutor, and we are going to learn how to Photoshop the cloning effect today. So if you followed the instructions in the article, you will have your base layer and all of the layers that you would like to import into Photoshop. So to do this, we go to File, Script, and Load into Stack. From here, you need to choose your images in any order, it doesn't matter. And make sure you click Attempt to Automatically Align Source Images. This does all the hard work for you. This should take a few minutes to load, depending on how fast your machine is. And then we have all the different layers ready to rock. The best way to do this from here is to try and get them in order of depth. And by that, I mean anything that's, that's further back in the image should be lower in the, la in the layers. Uh, there's one of these layers where I have my arm around myself and that one needs to be beneath the layer where I'm sat in front of myself. I hope that makes sense. All of this is very easy and simple to shift around, so if you get it wrong, you can always adjust it later, it's fine. On each of these layers, we need what's called an adjustment mask. If you press the little square button at the bottom, you then have a layer that's sort of on top of the image. What this does is if that layer is white, you can see everything on that layer. If the mask is black, it will be completely transparent. So this is a very non-destructive way to clone ourselves in and out of the image. So when you click the adjustment mask, the layer will be white by default. You can press Command and I if you're on Mac or Control and I to invert the layer to make it completely black. So when it's black, it's completely transparent and that layer effectively becomes invisible. To add bits back in, we need to paint it white. And all you need to do is choose the white on your color palette and a normal brush. I use a soft brush, so it's a little bit easier. And then you can literally just paint the elements back in however you like. This sounds a lot more confusing than it actually is. If you watch how it works, you'll be able to understand it better. So when we're on white, then all of the information that you paint comes back into the scene. And this is all completely non-destructive. So if you make a mistake, you can just simply change to black and color out the white bits that you want. And you can see on the adjustment layer there, um, the white bits are showing up in an otherwise black layer. And I messed that bit up. So I've just gone back to black to erase. And then we add another adjustment layer, make it black, and then paint in the next person. This is why getting the order of the layers is quite important, but you can sort of shuffle things around as and when you need. My technique is to do it quite roughly to begin with, uh, to painting everything in white and then going to black and fine tuning things a little bit. And you can see in the masks beside the layers, the bits that we are keeping and the bits that we are taking away. And that's all we need to do. We use our adjustment masks and our paintbrush to get all the bits into one frame. And then from here, you can fine tune it and then sort of export it however you like. 